I wanted to send you a message about this week. Um, I've been very stuck this week with my work and I haven't had very good grace about it. I haven't had a good attitude about it. I've been very petulant and stroppy and it's too hard, I can't do it, it's not fair, <laughs> no one can help me. Um, my children have had very short shrift from me this week, heaven help you if you don't say a please at dinner time. My husband has been unceremoniously told that he doesn't do the dishes enough or the laundry or he doesn't know what food's in the household and do bear in mind that this is the same husband who has been doing waking nights with our little one for the past three years, which is a trump card on any household chore. And I've, I've fallen very far short of what I would like to be. Not just academically, but in terms of being a nice person. And I, so a long time ago, I was married to a beautiful, kind, elegant man. And we got divorced. And I am deeply ashamed being a divorcee like a person out of time, like I'm as ashamed about that as somebody in the 50s would be. And we had the world's nicest divorce. We are a three-part documentary series on Radio 4 about how nice our divorce was. But even as the world's nicest divorce, it was still awful. And that year that we got divorced was shocking and horrible for, for lots of reasons. There was some, like, a friend of ours decided that I was the guilty party in the divorce. I was the baddie and, and tried to organise that all our other friends wouldn't see me anymore. And fortunately for me, all my other friends were like, that's, that's not what's going on here. Um, but that somebody would think that about me was really scary, especially when they'd known me. And then an aunt wrote to me, an aunt that I don't ever see or really know, wrote to me to tell me how wicked I was for getting divorced. And I wrote back and I explained, you know, it's not that sort of a divorce. You know, we're doing things really, <laughs> to this day, I think he and I have kept 12 of the 14 promises we made to each other on our wedding day. And there's no better test of all that I have I share with you than deciding who gets the washing machine. And like when we shopped for the flat that he moved into, the estate agents mistook us for the newlyweds that we'd been just a few years before because I was standing there saying things like, well, I could give you a bit more extra money and then you'd be able to get this. And so I wrote back to this aunt and I said, it's not like that. And she wrote back and told me that I was wicked. But that same year, there were also people who were extraordinarily kind to me. Um, I remember a lady that I didn't know at work taking me aside in the playground. And she was somebody who had such a lovely husband, like a really happy life and marriage and children and all of that stuff. And she took me aside in the playground. She said, do you know, Joe, that I forget her husband's name, you know, Bob is my second husband. And it was such a small thing to say, but it, it meant so much to me at the time because I thought I'd just messed up everything. I just thought I'd, I'd failed everything as I got divorced. And to look at her and go, your, your second husband you think she was showing me that there were different versions of my future that I hadn't imagined and she bothered to do that and she didn't really know me and I was so grateful and then for a period of time as I got divorced I lived in a van I spent six months living in a van 
and there was a family who took me in and they took me in without question without judgment they took me as I was and they were just so kind to me and I had previously learned that when you're given stuff beyond what you deserve that that's an act of grace and when the divorce was finalised I thought I can't take my maiden name again because I'm not a maid I don't I don't suit a miss anymore because I've done all of this and I can't keep his name because it belongs to him and his you know his future wife and I I am nameless and I looked at that year and of all the horrible things that happened in that year it was the grace of those people the shocking acts of unreasonable kindness that people had shown me that was what I wanted to take from that year and so my surname is Grace because I chose it and I chose it to remind myself of that kindness and to act you know like when you write a note on the back of your hand to remind yourself of something it was a name that I was meant to try and live up to and I've fallen very far short of it this week and obviously I, it's not a name you could ever live up to because it, because it means something very big but I'm supposed to try and I have failed this week on all fronts but as I have failed you have sent me messages saying you can do this Joe. you've commented on my post saying you know, like we like seeing what you're up to you've got this somebody somebody wrote and said do you remember when you were stuck and they named the thing that i was stuck with last time you think how does anybody remember that about this is my work why i i don't like i know i put posts up all the time but i don't i don't expect you to pay attention to them and i don't mind if you don't you like but somebody bothered to write and lots of people r random people have reached out and said if you want to talk about it if you need oh i've got this strategy i have had so much support from people online this week um so what i learned this week is the grace my name aspires to is there around me all the time. It just doesn't come from me. So thank you very much. And I'm a little bit less stuck now, so hopefully I'll do better at living up to the name next week. <laughs>